Hey guys, we're going to be checking out the official build of Android 6.0 Marshmallow on my Nexus 6. I flashed this last night, so I am still in the process of setting up my device and getting to know everything. But yeah, here it is. So if we dive into the settings, we'll go to about phone. You can see the Android version is 6.0. And if we tap that a few times, we can see the M, press it again, you kind of see a, a weird Marshmallow thing. And then pressing and then tapping and holding will reveal the Easter egg, which is essentially the same one we had in Lollipop. It's that Flappy Bird type game, except it now has a countdown. And instead of Lollipops, it has little marshmallows. So there you go. You can go ahead and play this in a dentist office if you want. But yeah, it's pretty much the same as it was in Lollipop. And yeah, if you're wondering, I suck just as bad as when this was on Lollipop. But if we go back to the about phone section, you'll see a new part that says Android security patch level. And this is basically designed to show off Android's new monthly security patch program. Hopefully Google holds true with this program because it's always good to be up to date with the latest security patches. Now I was actually running the Marshmallow Preview 3, so things aren't too different for me. But in terms of the launcher here, this is available in the Google Play Store, of course, but the animations are slightly different. So if you press an application, you'll see that the it kind of grows into the screen and um, that's really cool because it gives that little bit more fluidity. It gives that continuity. If we go into the calculator here, you can see that it expanded from where you press to open the app and it's dismissed through the on screen keys at the bottom. Now the app drawer has changed a little bit. You now have four apps at the top, which are your frequently used, I would assume. It now scrolls vertically instead of horizontally. You have an app picker on the right hand side so you can uh, go straight to a certain grouping of apps or you can just use the search at the top for example to search an individual app and get to it very quickly that's especially handy if you have a lot of applications now one of the big changes in marshmallow is of course app permissions before on lollipop and previous android versions you would be asked for the permissions when you installed it from the play store that was kind of clunky no one really read it now you'll be asked in real time when you want to use that feature so for example if you need to use the microphone in for example telegram or whatsapp it will ask you when you actually need to use it and then you can allow or deny it. You can also come into the settings here and allow or deny permissions. If you don't think BBC iPlayer should be using the telephone, you can you can turn that off and it won't be able to use it. So it's a lot more like iOS now, which I think is a good thing. Previously, when you had to allow them or deny them, um, on install it didn't really make sense no one really read them they just wanted to install the app and try it this is a much much better way of doing it so I'm glad to see it here another addition here is you can also disable the heads up peaking for each individual application so if for example you don't want whatsapp to always do the heads up notification from the top of the screen you can just go into the app settings go to app notifications and disable the allow peaking option and that's it the heads up notification or the peaking notification will no longer appear for that application that's a good thing because I didn't want all my applications to use that feature so you can go ahead and turn it off in marshmallow app linking is improved in marshmallow as well you know the question you got on previous Android versions do you want to open this YouTube URL in the YouTube app or web browser well you can now set what it's going to open with by default so if we scroll down to YouTube here and we go to the open by default section you can see that all the YouTube links are going to open in YouTube straight away. It's not going to ask you that question anymore. So it's definitely an improvement. Of course, if you prefer the older way, you can set it to ask you every time if you like. Volume controls has also changed a bit. You can see you have three options, one for the notifications, one for your media, and one for the alarms. And yes, silent mode is back just by tapping down on the volume keys. It's actually a quick way to get to do not disturb mode, but this is basically silent mode. It's only going to allow alarm, so you get to vibrate, you press down again, and there you have your silent mode. So yeah, you can also get to do not disturb from the quick settings. There are loads of different options in here as well. You can have priority mode, you can have total silence. They've given you a little prompt to try and explain exactly how things work. You can do it timed, or if you go into the settings, you can actually have this turn on automatically for certain times of the day and also certain days. So you can have different permissions for the weekend and different permissions for the weekdays, which is pretty sweet. If you were wondering, the system UI tuner is still here. It's, it's still hidden behind holding the settings icon and then you'll find it uh, right at the bottom there. It gives you a prompt to say that basically it's experimental, it's not for everyone, but I like this. You can kind of clean up your status bar, you can turn off uh, individual things. So if you don't want your alarm icon to always be there, if you don't want the Wi-Fi to be there, you can turn it off. Of course, they are still on. They're just not cluttering up your status bar. So hopefully, I kind of hope this makes it into the official or, you know, some official build of Android properly eventually and not be a hidden option. But it's there. 
The battery percentage, it shows it in the icon. I'm not a huge fan of that. I can't really see it. I wish they just gave us a separate percentage, but it's there if you'd like that option. Now, one of the new features in Android Marshmallow here is doze mode, but I can't really show you this because it's all under the hood stuff, but basically it's meant to save your device battery life when it's idle. So when it's sitting on a table, not doing anything for a while, it's meant to put your device into a low power state. The apps aren't going to refresh and things like that. And it's meant to save up to 30% more battery life while idle. Of course, I haven't been able to test any of this just yet as I've just flashed it, but everyone is hoping for good things here. And especially with the new Android device, with the sensor hub this should lead to a pretty significant improvement in idle battery life we'll just have to wait and see though you can also see computed power use when you go into applications on the battery screen I have no idea how accurate it is but at least it gives you some idea of what apps are using what power now Google also added a feature called App Standby which is another way to try and help save battery life. Essentially Android is going to try and work out which apps you use the most and the ones that you don't use a lot it's going to make them inactive so they're not running in the background. You can see right now all of mine are active because I haven't, give an, I haven't given Android a chance to actually work out which ones I don't use that often. But yeah hopefully that will lead to better battery life as well only time will tell. Now the biggest addition without doubt here is Google's Now on Tap. You can access it by pressing and holding the home button on any screen. It's then going to read that screen and give you contextual information about what's happening. So it's pretty awesome. It's an extension of Google Now and it works really well. You can see the question I'm asking right here. Nando's for dinner at 8 p.m. tomorrow. If we press and hold the home button, you can see it reads the screen and it's given me a calendar event to dinner tomorrow at 8 p.m. You can see it has got the correct date. The 7th today is the sixth and I did say tomorrow and then it gives me more information about the restaurant so I can open the Twitter or the Facebook page or I can just go to the web if you do have a table booking application it will also include that as well so you can book a table straight from Google now on tap which is pretty awesome uh, if we try another example here let's say somebody asks you to go watch a movie but you have no idea about the Martian in this case you can press and hold for Google now on tap and you can see there's the Martian it tells you what the score is on IMDb you can go to YouTube, you can get images, you can see the cast, or you can dive straight into the IMDb app, which I do have installed, and you can read up on the Martian here. You can see what the reviews are and all that good stuff. So it gives you a lot of good contextual information. I think this is gonna be really useful. It's gonna change how a lot of people use their device if they don't know something or they wanna quickly search something. Google Now on Tap is gonna be the most efficient and quickest way to do that. Of course, you can still get to the Google Now screen by swiping left on the uh, home screen, but you can no longer get to Google Now by pressing and holding the home button or swiping up that is now reserved for Google now on tap so there you go guys that's pretty much Android 6.0 marshmallow I hope you enjoyed it let me know what you think in the comments peace out